we welcome back the bearded betters fan favorite, Mr. Ducky, the mallard man himself. He is flying high quite literally at the moment. How are we doing, my New Jersey friend? I'm doing great, bro. <laughs> flying high. You know how you know how the ducks do. The ducks do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. I mean, there's so much fun to be had on weekend betting, whether it's the USC play that just exploded. You were out and about today. USC wins on a miraculous play that we couldn't even hedge out of. I wanted to take UCLA for us. USC ends up buzzer beating three for us there at the end. Hawaii, though, you didn't have that up and down. That was a nice, steady win for you. Tell us how the plus three Hawaiian Warriors did for you last night. Dude, listen, man. The duck <laughs> might... The duck might be a magician. I think so. I mean, I think we need to get you a <laughs> wand or something at this point. Because, <laughs> uh, listen, man, I, I said they were going to win by five, and they won by five. So it is what it is, man. <laughs> you, call, I mean, it. it's one thing to say, hey, I think the underdog is going to win, not just cover the plus three that Hawaii was given. But to call the five points, you have them up by five points. Dude, you are on a tear. You're dominating the Twitter game with the memes. We've got people waiting for for all of those plays that you are going to be giving out. And that's why I thought, hey, let's do a little all-star special extravaganza and get some fun plays going for Sunday. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it should, it should be a fun time because the uh, all-star game usually is pretty fun. Hopefully, you know, they, they do a good job this year as well. Exactly, and we'll talk about the NBA in a little bit, but March Madness hype, what do you have to say on it? I know that you're becoming a fan of getting plus money on both sides of these teams. It's one yeah, of the ways uh, that I've been saying... For several months now, of let's not root for teams, let's sit back and relax. Is that something that you're trying out as well? Yeah, especially for March Madness. Uh, the spreads are going to get really, really tight. Um, it's going to be just a lot of just pretty much... It's. I feel like the statistics are going to become a lot of guesswork, and that's going to get dangerous. So I just feel like it, it would be a lot better to just kind of... If I'm going to pregame bet on anything, to bring that back to 0.5 units and just try to get plus money on both sides if possible at any point because a lot of these games are going to go back and forth, especially deeper in the tournament when you have, you know, better teams playing against each other. Yeah, and we'll get to those down there. I'm sure that you have teams lined up. Is there any one team that you're going to be looking to follow as we go into March Madness? I saw that Illinois had a lot of yeah. interest from the Beard State. Michigan is your pick. Definitely can't doubt that one as well. Yeah, I got, I got Michigan and, and Illinois. Those are my two uh, okay. favorite teams going into the tournament. Those are two I've actually, I think I've made more money off of them than any other team. <laughs> I mean, they're good teams. It's so, it's almost like hilarious going and watching LIU oh, yeah. or whoever. <laughs> and then you play, you see Illinois play. And I'll go for like from the pool house to like inside. I'll be like, is this the same sport? We were just watching like layups being missed versus like monster slams by guys. So, I mean, those are two teams I would Bro, definitely back. Could you imagine Jack Ballantyne playing against Michigan? <laughs> Jack Ballantyne in his headband, hairdo, pompadour style. I have, I mean, it's not, he couldn't even, he couldn't even be the water boy on that team. But there's something yeah, that you no. wanted to talk about that wasn't necessarily sports related. You want to talk about a little bad bunny. I think your uh, duck luck is going around here. You want to talk about the new Lola bunny that is going around. If you guys have not seen this, you can watch my screen on YouTube or Twitch. They've uh they've given Lolo quite the goods. Yeah, man, they they literally turned her from a from an hourglass into a Mack truck. In my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fun. It's like why the the Pixar animators get the worst time on this. They're like, why does every mom in a Pixar movie just have a dump truck back yeah. there? And they're kind of doing that same thing with Lola. So I mean, maybe you'll uh, Daffy Duck will have to get you a press pass in here. Yeah, man. Uh, no, nah, honestly, I, I get why they're doing it. It's you know, it's it's, it's, in, it's that's trendy, how media it is right now. Um, but come on, man. I blame LeBron for this. That's that's why I blame. <laughs> <laughs> it's all LeBron's fault. Well, we'll transition. Yeah, man. They, they they gave him a what you call it? They they gave him a, a CGI freaking hairline, but they can't fix Dude. up Lola Rabbit there. <laughs> Isn't that so crazy? Because people that don't know, I'll put it on my screen right now. Elon Musk was like legitimately bald, and then he got all his hair back. Like now he looks fine. Jeff Bezos and LeBron have so much money. How can their hair guy not do what they did for Elon? I mean, who knows? But the CGI, I mean, if you have the money, just go for it there. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know, man. That's and a good question, though. I've got hairline questions. I've got questions of all sorts. Animated, non-animated. What I want to know between hairlines and not animated is Team LeBron. You mentioned him. 
You want to know about Team LeBron, Team Durant. On this All-Star Weekend, we are going to have some plays that are going to be made for the Beards. I've got some fades. You've got guys that you like. I have a typical Corey Crone play. Shall we start an overview of what All-Star Weekend is? Typically, this is a different event. Do you want to give us what we can expect on Sunday? Because we have the game and the skills and stuff competitions, which is not normal. Yeah, so it looks like we're going to have everything on the same day. So we're going to have... First, uh, the skills challenge, followed by the three-point contest. Then uh, it's going to be the all-star game is going to start. And then at halftime, we're going to have the dunk contest. Which is a very cool lineup, right? I have gone to two of these all-star games. Saturday night is so much fun, and the Sunday is typically boring. But now that both of those are happening on the same day, having a halftime entertainment, like, who the fuck wants to see Pitbull? Or, like, yeah. they're going to bring out LMFAO. You know what I mean? It's just, like, whoever is in the budget as, like, a has-been star, then, like, that's who we would typically see. And I don't want to see RZA or whatever. Like, you know, don't give me something. So I like that the dunk contest is going at the half. This one will be taking place in Atlanta. So we've got the skills this year, the three-point, and the slam dunk contest. Do you want to give us a rundown on how all the things are going? Uh, like, what do you mean? So, like, for the skills contest, it's a little different as we have seen it in previous years. We've got six players, and we're going to go and do a layup at the end. Is that correct? And then it moves on to bouncing the balls and doing, like, chest passes, bounce passes? Uh, yeah, I believe that... I think it tests their dribbling, their passing, their shooting abilities. I don't remember, per se, exactly what is in the skills contest, if I'm being honest. Perfect. Uh, I just know that it had to do with... Uh, that there was like a target and then they do the bounce pass, the chest passes, they did to do the layup. And then there was like, there might've been a couple shots, right? From out, outside the arc. Yes. I think there's a three. Whatever might, it may there be. There might've been a three. For yeah, the skills contest, <laughs> we've got Luka Doncic, Chris Paul, Demonta Sabonis, who you've bet on recently, Julius Randle, uh, yeah. Nikola Vucevic, and Robert Covington. For the skills odds, does anyone catch your eye here as we start and open the night? So the only guy who caught my eye, right, because I, I know that in the past with the skills challenge, it's usually the most unassuming person that wins this. Luka Doncic so is the favorite at plus 220 right now. Chris Paul at a close plus 230, and then we tail off from there. Yeah, I, I and I can see Luka winning this. I can see, to, to be honest, any of them can really sure. just take this yeah. away. It's just, you know, you never know who gets hot at the, the moment. Um, my The guy I'm going with, I'm going to go with Julius Randle here. Okay. At plus 480. And it's partly because of value, but also partly because, you know, there's always just some random person who takes this. And I just feel like he's just all around been great all year. And he kind of has all of these skills. He's a great passer. Um, he averages close to triple-double, to be honest. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I feel like he's one of those that might sneakily uh, win this. Yes. So, my bookie can even better your odds right now. Is that plus 500? I'll be making a lot of these plays on my bookie as well. This is in the podcast description. If you're watching on YouTube and Twitch, it'll be in the description there, as well as on our Discord, where I heavily recommend joining. It's where the USC festivities happen today. It's where Ducky has been lighting it up in the chat. So if you haven't joined it there, you can come in on and share your thoughts. You can get all the Beards thoughts as well of who listen to this podcast. Julius Randle, my bookie, plus 500. Does that encourage you instead of plus 480, or does that scare you off? Uh, no, it doesn't scare me off. It's around the same <laughs> to yeah. me. I mean, for here, I think this is a total gamble. And yeah. if I'm not going to make an official play, but if I had to pick, I would pick Chris Paul. He's a second favorite, so it's not that far-fetched of an opinion. But like you're saying, Robert Covington, plus 750, which Bookmaker had, would be just as good of a gamble as taking on Luka because I don't feel yeah, that I mean, either one guy is lined up perfectly to dominate that they're having fun at at the end of the day. Yeah, I feel like this to me is like a, one of those like five to ten dollar plays just to yeah. kind of uh, cheer something on, you know? Exactly. So the skills contest, you are going to go with a Julius Randle at plus five hundred. What are we taking on that units wise? Uh, that I, I wouldn't go above, you know, point twenty five. So you're taking a quarter a unit on the plus five hundred, which would win one point two five units. That would be all that you would need for the rest of the game. Yeah. Okay. Well, skills challenge. Ducky's lean is that Julius Randle making small plays here at a quarter of a unit. The three-point contest, I have a play that I have found, and it is on Bookmaker. It is the number one or two spot, I would say, that I live bet. They have different lines than Bavada. Today, I was able to grab USC there. So, Bookmaker, they have a prop here. The three-point shooters. 
in this contest are all names that I would say the majority of basketball fans would come to know. Those shooters include Steph Curry, Golden State Warrior, right? One of those guys that a lot of people will want to bet on. He is the favorite at minus 105, says Bavada. Next up is former dunk champion, Zach Levine, Donovan Mitchell, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and all-star replacement for Devin Booker, Mike Conley. So we've got six players, all all-stars. What do you think? So I personally have uh, Donovan Mitchell here. Okay. Plus 650, and, uh, says Bavada. I love that. I love those odds. To be honest, to me, he's one of the better shooters on that lineup, at least from the three. This year, he's been freaking destroying. He's shooting 382 this year from the three-point line. And, um, yeah, I, I, I just feel like he's just on one of those streaks, and he's going to go in there. He's going to try to show out, and he's going to try to, you know, one-up Curry here. And I, I think that he might, actually. Well, and this is even better. Bavada had it at plus 650 but bookmaker has it at plus 697 so you're getting almost a plus 700 for something that is pretty much just a gamble is that another quarter of a unit that you would want on the plus we'll call it 700 yeah i'm going conservative on on these kind of plays like these are the like these are the ones that are just kind of like uh because i feel like with a skills contest or the three-point contest there's more of a, of a gamble because it, it's a toss-up you know Totally. I mean, that's we're going to yeah. say that this is not the Game 7 Finals effort that we are going to be expecting. I do have a play that I like, though, and I'm going to take 1.39 units to win one unit that Stephen Curry does not win. This is the play that can be found on Bookmaker. They're giving plus 115 if Curry does win, which is bettering Bavada's minus 105 line. And at minus 139, it's not that I'm not saying that Curry is the best shooter. All I'm saying is these are three-pointers. It is certainly a sub-50% chance each time one of these is shot. Curry is going up against guys who are all players that are experienced. Mike Conley, Jalen Brown, Tatum, Mitchell, Levine. I get there's not a true marksman in that group and that this is Curry's to lose. But for 1.39 units, you're giving me five guys versus one. That is what I am taking. 1.39 units on Bookmaker to win one unit that Curry does not have the trophy raised. I totally I agree with you on that, to be honest. It's just a, just a value play. Just taking five yeah. guys, and I get that people, when Mike Conley got put in, they're like, okay, well, he's not going to win. Well, we never know, yeah, right? No, he's been God. so disrespected yeah, that it's like, no, he's been just shooting threes all day. So I'm not expecting max effort from any of these guys, and that is why I'm going to be taking the fade on Stephen Curry. It is not the last fade that I have for us, though, as we move into the dunk contest that will be taking place at halftime. There's only three dunkers. One of which has a name that I've never seen before, which is Anthony. <laughs> I mean, did you mean to say Anthony? Like, what's going on here? But Anthony Simmons, something that you and I talked about before, was that at IMG Academy. IMG Academy is in Bradenton, Florida. You didn't know about it, and I consider you a good sports mind. So IMG Academy, betting education of the day, is that a lot of times the high school players go places that's like a coaching carousel for the NCAA football coaches. What I mean is, let's say that Nevada is paying a coach $1.2 million and some smaller school like Fresno State is only going to pay them 900000 There are spots where that's considered the $1.2 million is better than a $900,000 job. And depending if someone would lower themselves or if someone gets a crazy scoop and gets hired there, there's this little give and take of the depth chart of where some coaches can go. That happens with players as well. Let's say some point guard, instead of going to a school like Duke, picks an Oregon State. Will then just completely mess up a whole row of college athletes on where they go to school. That's what happened to Anthony Simmons. He went to IMG Academy, which is a fifth year program. You do a fifth year of high school and you try again. You can either go straight to the NBA draft or you can go to a college that hopefully you don't get shook out in the process, losing that game of musical chairs being the odd man out. So IMG Academy has now produced an NBA player and Anthony Simmons, but you had a stat that completely changed my thinking on this and cemented my play. Can you tell us? Anthony Simmons, one of three players in this dunk contest outside of Cassius Stanley from Duke and Obi Toppin from Dayton. Anthony Simmons. This guy's in the dunk contest, but... But he has only dunked twice in the entire season. How? Year. How? 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 How did we pick a guy in the dunk contest who will have to dunk more dunks than he has dunked in actual games all season? I, 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 don't, I don't understand know. this I don't choice. Know. I don't get it. Yeah. I, I, I get why they couldn't put Zion in it or whatever because Lamello he's in too, the All-Star game. Sick. Yeah, yeah, but but like, you know, but at least LaMelo's not in the All-Star game. He I know. He could have done it. Yeah, so yeah, like, I don't know. I think I think LaMelo has done so well and he doesn't want to be a distraction or whatever, but yeah. it would be so fun. I don't think LeBron ever did. In Co like Kobe no, LeBron won never did it either. Yeah, and like it's yeah. these guys are almost 
scared of losing. But if you're LaMelo Ball, I mean, like, dude, Obi Toppin and Fernie Simmons in the betting odds favorite, Cassius Stanley from Duke. We have had a difference of sports books here, all of them at very different lines. But Anthony Simmons, all we know about him, IMG Academy, and two dunks all year. Is that a reason to fade him? Where are you thinking for the slam dunk contest? This is going down on Sunday at halftime of the NBA All-Star Game. So in uh, in my opinion, yeah, I'm I'm fading Anthony Simmons. There's no way I'm I'm gonna put any money on him. No. <laughs> but uh I, I in my opinion, I think it's Obi Toppins to lose. Uh, easily. Okay. I don't see any way that he could lose this, but you know, you know, you know how this stuff goes. <laughs> it's gambling. We do know how this stuff goes. And surprisingly, <laughs> if you look at Bavada, Bavada's odds here are Kasha Stanley plus one oh five, making him the favorite, Obi Toppin at plus one ninety five, and Anthony Simmons at plus two sixty. Bookmaker was very weird on this. The only prop they had was Kasha Stanley to either win or lose, which at first I was thinking, okay, I don't really like Simmons. I guess I'll just either go with this. But I head over to my bookie, and they're offering Anthony Simmons at plus 170 instead of the plus 260 that Bavada did. And Bavada on Stanley went from plus 105 to plus 150. I am going to hit up my bookie for this one. I am taking a half unit on Kasha Stanley. And OB Toppin going with a fade of Anthony Simmons, a total Corey play of taking plus 150 and plus 200, leaving Anthony Simmons in the dark, somehow making a crone system out of the slam dunk <laughs> contest. So a half unit on both of these at plus 150 for Stanley and at plus 200. The worst case here is that we lose a unit. If Stanley wins, we win a quarter of a unit and OB Toppin winning would bring home half a unit. So fade Anthony. Right? Is it Anthony or Anthony? Fade either one of those guys. I'm taking a half unit on each of those at my bookie. Had the best odds for this one at plus 150 and at plus 200. Are you touching this All Star game? I was telling you off air. I have been to two of these, and what I can tell you, granted, it was in 2007, 2011. It was a million years ago. But the All Star Slam Dunk is like a fun time. The celebrities are there. Usually rappers are there. They're all coexisting, having a good old time. The mood is jolly. They're shooting out t-shirts. Everyone's having a good time. I went to one when I was pissed. It was 2007, and literally on the back of the ticket, you had a color, like just all four different colors. And what that was is because PlayStation sponsored, I think it was a skills contest. If your guy won the skills contest in 2007, the winner, whoever had that color ticket, got a PSP. Like a $250 item. And so I'm like in seventh grade at the time. And I'm like, oh my God, I want our guy to win. And he didn't win. But yeah. And then your heart's broken. Yes. But it was, it was was in Vegas. It was so fun. And the Sunday when we went, it was just the exact opposite. Like it was almost lackadaisical. Guys didn't care. Great. Like not that we were there to see like a tough game, but it's to me, I don't know if I want to bet on it. I want your thoughts of betting on something that really they don't give a fuck about. Yeah, uh, for the All Star Game itself, I, I don't think I'm gonna bet on the actual game, like you know, because the spread is what minus three point five for Team LeBron. Yeah, yeah, that that's not that's not worth it to me. I, if if you're gonna do any sort of betting, then you have to do the Chrome method here. You have to <laughs> plus money on both sides. I don't hate it because you know both. Yeah, because both teams are gonna have their runs, and they're gonna go back and forth. It's kind of how it happened last year, but. Um, and then at the end, one team's going to pull away. And in my opinion, that's going to be Team LeBron. Uh, I don't. There was one stat that I saw today about this uh, about this game. So Team LeBron, their starters, right? So their five starters have as many All Star appearances, or almost as many All Star appearances as Team Durant's entire team. Wow. So the experience is what you're liking. Yeah, like they have 34 All Star appearances for Team LeBron and their starters, and Team Durant's entire team has 39. That's insane. What a stat. Yeah, Good that, find there. Yeah, that, that threw me off. I was like, wait, hold on a second. Yeah. So that that's a huge, huge advantage there. You know, they have a lot of adva- – they, they have a huge advantage there. They have um, more of a stacked team in my opinion. Uh, team Durant does have the shooters, but it looked like he, you know, he went with his buddies there instead. He picked Kyrie first, I think, while LeBron yeah, was playing. Yeah, I mean, like if you're playing you know, at the – <laughs> on the same team it's like almost like this is a worthless event anyway like we might as well not create any locker room drama i've got the rosters in front of me if you guys have not seen it or not followed and you're like Corey, you've been only talking about ncaa basketball why are we even talking about nba well here's why because team durant also has a bigger roster they've got bradley beal joel Embiid, kyrie irving Kawhi leonard and jason tatum now the two guys that have been replaced now is devin booker 
Uh, there's who was that second replacement? Well, they've got Anthony da- Anthony Davis and Devin Booker were the replacements. Then they have James Harden, Zach Levine, Donovan Mitchell. Oh, Conley. Conley was the other guy. Yes, Donovan Mitchell, Julius Randle, Vucevic, Zion, and Mike Conley, who is going to be in the three point contest as well. Team LeBron. They've got Giannis, Curry, Doncic, Jokic. I mean, like what a team. Jalen Brown. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah, that team is just <laughs> is it Paul stacked. George, uh, Lillard, Gobert, Paul Sabonis, and Ben Simmons. So especially the starters, how can you not like Team LeBron? But plus money at both sides, you are going to get no complaints from me. Are you still going point two five units? You're playing this one small. Uh, well, if I can get plus money on both sides, I might go half a unit on each side if sure, possible. And sure. then you know, if if it keeps swinging back and forth, you know, keep throwing a little quarter unit, quarter unit, quarter. Yep, you know yep. what I mean? See, that's the thing is like for whatever like the crone method or whatever, and I call it like in taking just like plus money, it's it's like. It's like you're driving for Uber. How much do you want to work? Like, you can secure plus money on both sides, put your feet up and call it a day, or you can just hop right back in. So, as yeah. we see this one ebb and flow, I think that's definitely a good way to watch. That way you're not just crossing your fingers for so long. But I believe you have some props that you like, and as well as an MVP choice before we wrap up here. Yeah. So, um, my MVP, ch- well, I guess I can go with the prop. So, my first prop that I like a lot is uh, Luka Doncic at 14.5 points. I am inclined to take the over here. I think that he is going to play a decent amount in this game. I think he's going to score a decent amount in this game. Uh, people, you know, they played zero defense in yeah, the All-Star zero, games. Zero. That's just how it is. And uh, Team Durant, to begin with, already has zero defense. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's uh, like... Yeah, so I, I just feel like Luka's going to cook up. He's going to, you know, he's you know he's the pretty boy in the NBA right now. <laughs> I you mean, know, they're, he... they're trying to build him up. And he's gonna he's gonna score he's gonna show out and uh, I, I he's my pick for MVP as well. Perfect. And that MVP you have at plus eleven hundred. I'm running through my lines. I think as it's well. even higher. Right? Is there is there a spot that you took this fourteen and a half out? I mean, I'm on Intertops, my bookie, Bovada, and Bookmaker. Oh, there I saw are... that on FanDuel. Okay, so FanDuel betters fifteen points for Luca. I guess the only your only obstacle and path to victory is just many guys playing but 15 for Luca Luca's going to garner attention and they're going to want him to shoot so I like that yeah and his at plus 1100 I am looking around right now for Luca yes plus 900 on bookmaker we've got him plus 800 is plus 1100 fan duel as well uh yeah it is nice okay so fan duel betters rejoice being able to take the final two plays from Mr. Ducky. I think this has been a good addition to spice up my Sunday. We, we covered skills, three point dunk. You've even got the all star game yourself going back and forth on plus money. I love it. You have any final thoughts? Ducky underscore bets on Twitter. The guy is a meme lord <laughs> at this point. I know that we're having some more victories and probably little Twitter beefs in the future. Is there anything else you would like to add? Follow that Ducky underscore bets and join our Discord to get his plays first. Oh, man, let's just have some fun. Let's uh, hope for a good game tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, let's just keep on making money and uh, having uh, (laughs) draining Vegas' pockets. (laughs) Draining Vegas' pockets. You guys know him as the Duck Man. Ducks fly together, and that is what we're doing. From our all-star at the Bearded Betters, Mr. Ducky, he's bringing you the all-star game plays. My friend, I will talk to you next week. All right, bro. And you got to hit me with the quack quack on the way out. Quack quack. (laughs) We'll add that (laughs) soundbite in, of course. All right, we will 